Hi everyone, it's me, Spring the Fiber Enthusiast, and welcome to the channel. Today I want to show you how to tink. What is tink? Tink is the word knit spelled backwards. So, what do you think that means? Hmm. Okay, so we're going to unknit <laughs> what we already knitted. So, I just laid down my project, you know, and I'm working along and I pick it back up and my yarn's right here ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and finish working through on this project here and knit to the end of the row and I'm knitting along here. And... I look and I'm like, wait a minute, something, something looks weird here. Do y'all see that? What is that? Wait a minute. There's another one. What in the world? Oh no, I've got extra stitches. I need to get rid of those. How did that happen? You know what? I bet when I set this down, I didn't notice but sometimes when you set your needles down, it will accidentally pick up a stitch. And you'll pick it up and not notice it until after you've already went through and knitted that. So now we got to tink our work back to get rid of those extra stitches. So what you're going to do to tink is you're going to take your left needle and lay it down on that stitch. We've got our working yarn kind of stretched out here and going to lay that needle down onto the stitch, slide it back on to the needle. So not the one that's on the loop here. We're not slipping it over. We're actually catching the stitch from the row below. And we're going to lay our needle down on that left leg and slide it on and slip it off like that. And now here's that stitch that we picked up by accident. So instead of bringing it like this and taking it off, we're just going to slide that stitch off. There. Now our bar is back where it needs to be, the ladder itself. Okay, now when you're tinking, you got to reverse your tension as well. So you got to constantly be fixing that tension. Again, you can see the difference here. That stitch is an actual stitch. Look how small it is. Going to lay your left needle onto the left leg of that stitch and slide it over onto your left needle. Here, we'll do that again. That's a actual stitch. So we're going to pick up that stitch below, sliding it back on and pushing the right needle out of the stitch and dropping that yarn. Here's another one that's an actual stitch. So we're going to left needle over the left leg of that stitch below and slide it back onto the left needle pushing our right needle out of the current stitch and dropping the working yarn. Up oh, here's where one of those extra stitches are. So you can see how big that hole is below. That's not actually a stitch. So I'm just going to push that right needle to the point where I can pop that off. There we go. Now it's back to the way it's supposed to be. Oh, there's one more here. That looks like a yarn, an actual yarn over. So again, left needle onto the left leg of that stitch, slide it on, drop that right needle out of the stitch, and drop your working yarn. Gonna work our way back. One more, you can see quite the difference between those two. One more. 
yep, that's a yarn over. That's where I picked it up and just started knitting. So I'm gonna pull that yarn over off and examine. Nope, those are all good. So now we can just simply knit through. And we'll take a quick look at it once again. Once we get to the end here. But that is all there is to tink, to tink back your knitted project. Sometimes I have tinked back a couple of rows because it's easier than frogging back or trying to pick up a lifeline and frog back. We will do a video on how to do a lifeline at some point. But here we go. We can see that our, our stitches are back to normal. All right, everyone, I hope that you've enjoyed this short tutorial on how to tink back your knitted work. And uh, yeah, be blessed, be a blessing, and until next time, bye for now.